Now it's time to play around with Nessus. So when it comes to Nessus, Nessus is what is called a vulnerability scanner. You're going to use this quite frequently when you work as a penetration tester slash ethical hacker. Basically, let's say you're doing an external assessment. Chances are that you're going to use Nessus in that assessment. Probably even right away, you might kick off your scans. Basically, you're gonna send out an email saying, hey, scans are about to start and then you're gonna start your scans and then you're gonna let those scans run and while you let those scans run, they take some time. You're gonna go out and do your information gathering, maybe look for those breach credentials, try to find something juicy on the client. Then you'll come back and you'll review your scan results and see if there's anything interesting there. Same thing with internal. Uh, the process really doesn't change. We use Nessus quite a bit. So we're going to use Nessus here and just see what it looks like and how we can use it to our advantage. So let's go ahead and just go out to Google and we're going to Google Nessus download. And we're going to go to downloads right here from Tenable. Actually, we'll download Nessus right here, sorry. And up at the top, we are looking for 64-bit Debian. So it says Ubuntu, but we're just looking for the Debian. So we're gonna go ahead and just click on that and download it. We'll agree, we won't even read it. And we'll save here. And this will take a minute or so to download depending on your connection speed. So if you need to pause, go ahead and pause. Now we're going to open up a terminal and I'll make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to CD over to my downloads folder because that's where it is. And then we're gonna say dpkg, which is dpackage. And we're going to install with a dash I and we're just gonna say Nessus, there we go. Just tab if you have nothing in there, capital N on the Nessus and it should auto complete. And then we'll hit enter. And it's going to grab the package and then start to download it here and install it. And you can see automatically it has been installed. So it says you can start Nessus scanner by typing forward slash Etsy in it D Nessus D start. We're just gonna copy that and paste it. And then we're gonna to navigate to this Kali 443, 84, 8834, I cannot talk. And then you're gonna see your connection's not secure. We're just gonna say advance, add exception, confirm. And here is Nessus. Now this is going to compile plugins here. So this is going to take some time. Go ahead and let this finish. And when it does, go ahead and say, uh, we're gonna download or install Ness Nessus Essentials. Okay, and then you're going to provide it with your name and you need a valid email for an activation code, all right? Once your activation code has arrived via email, go ahead and just copy paste and then hit continue. And then it's going to ask you for a username. So I'm just gonna say H Adams for me and then I'll just do password one, two, three because you know, I'm super secure. And I'm not gonna save and then now it's gonna take a minute. So just go ahead and pause your video, let this install, go get a drink, go get some coffee, whatever it is that makes you happy. And once your Nessus is installed and you are at a login screen, go ahead and log in and then come back to the video and we'll start from there. Whew, that took forever. All right, so we have loaded Nessus, it's installed, and now we're brought to this blank screen that says my scans. Why is it blank? Well, it's blank because we haven't made a scan yet. So let's go ahead and go up to new scan. And let's quickly talk about what we're capable of doing. So this is the free edition of Nessus. This means that we can scan against any private IP address and we can scan up to 16 of those, I do believe, at one time. So remember back to the networking section of your class A through class C. That's what we're capable of scanning here. If you were to try to go out and scan a website or an external host, not gonna happen. So we do have a couple options here. We're gonna start with this basic network scan and then we'll talk a little bit about the advanced scan. So let's go ahead and click on this basic network here. And what we can do is we can just type in something like Keoptrix for the name. And then I just always copy this because you need a description. I just like to paste it in the description as well. And then down here, it's gonna say, hey, what targets do you wanna scan against? Well, we're only gonna provide one IP address and that is the IP of Keoptrix. 
And then let's go with the tabs here on the side. We've got the schedule tab. Schedule sounds exactly what it sounds like. It's scheduling. So let's say that you are into automation and you're working as a pen tester and you it's a Monday morning at eight. Maybe you want to sleep in just a little bit longer and you say, hey, you know what? I got to email a client. I'll schedule that email will go out at eight o'clock and then the email is going to say, hey, we're kicking off scans right now. And at 801, maybe your scan can kick off and you can schedule that to happen and then you can wake up a little late. Pro tips there. Also, you can enable scanning for once, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. So if you're in a business, you can do this on a periodic basis and get updated scan results. There's also notifications via SMTP if you have an SMTP server. Most importantly, discovery. So it's going to do port scan of common ports here. I actually like to do port scan of all ports. Again, this is the same thing as like a dash P versus a dash P dash. You see the one through 65,535 here. We come down just common ports. I'm guessing top 1000. So let's go down into assessment and we see scan type default. So we can scan default. We can scan for web vulnerabilities. We can scan for all web and all web complex. Let's just scan for known web vulnerabilities. If we go into complex, it's going to take a while. And this just depends on how deep into the scan you want to go. But we're just going to say for now, scan for known web vulnerabilities. And it'll show what it's going to do. It's going to do some page crawling, do some directory traversing and look for vulnerabilities. Okay, on the report, it's going to say, hey, can we edit scan results? Yes, we can. Should we display hosts that respond to ping, display unreachable hosts? I just leave this as default most of the time. And then on the advanced tab, we have scan type. I just like to say default here. So we'll save this. And then we'll go ahead and just launch it. And you'll see the wheel start spinning and now it means we're, we're running and this is going to take some time. So while this is going on, let's go ahead and hit new scan up here. And let's look at this as well. So we've got the advanced scan and they've got other scans here, which I don't use a lot of, but you might have used them in the past if you're familiar with Nessus or they've got little one offs like they've got this shell shock detection and it looks like they've got these shadow brokers uh, detection here. So they've got a couple different scans, even a malware scan. Um, but we're going to go into advanced scan. These are the most common two you'll be using. Same deal here. And when we go into discovery, you see the discovery is a little bit different. So we've got host scanning and it says, hey, do you want to ping the host or maybe you don't want to ping the host? And if we do ping the host, what are we looking for? Are we looking for uh, ARP, TCP, ICMP or UDP? Uh, what do we want to scan? Do we want to scan network printers? If we're doing an internal network assessment, maybe we want to click that. Um, maybe not, you know, and we can do a different types of scanning here. There's a lot more options, which is what advanced scanning is for. We could do port scanning. You see the SYN scan comes up again, AKA stealth scanning. We could do UDP and even down here, it says it's really not possible for a UDP to pick up between open and filtered ports. So UDP scanning takes forever and it's not always reliable. Uh, we can do service discovery. I kind of just leave these blank or leave them as default. And then when we come through assessment, same thing. It just gives us additional options here. So it's always good to click through these. Uh, do we want to brute force any logins? We could use Hydra to do brute forcing if we want. We could test for default accounts on if we could discover like an Oracle database, et cetera. But this is going to go through and try empty passwords, try login as password, et cetera. So this just does a little bit more here. We can scan web applications and we can say, hey, we want to use a specific user agent or we want to crawl from a certain web page. How many pages are we going to crawl? Again, it just gives us more control. So if we come down here, reporting looks the same and then advanced. We have a little bit of uh, more options here as well. But again, either either way, if you use the advanced scan, I would start with the basic scan just as a beginner and then kind of play around with the advanced scan and see if you can scan against the same host and maybe get back more information and maybe Keoptrix is a good one to play with. But let's go ahead and go over to credentials. And now if you had credentials for a machine and you wanted to like log into that machine via SSH or Windows or even SNMP, you could enter in credentials. 
and you could scan a little bit deeper on the machine, but you're likely never going to get that as a pen tester because you usually don't have any access. So let's go back to our scans and you see now that it's scanning and running. The nice thing is that it does update vulnerabilities as it finds them and it is finding them. We're actually at 99% right now. So you can click in it and you can see that it's got all different kinds of vulnerabilities and right now they're kind of grouped. So we won't worry about them too much. We're gonna ungroup this once it's done. So I tell you what, go ahead and let your scan finish. Once your scan's finished, I'm gonna meet you over in the next video, which is gonna be part two, where we're gonna look at the scan results, talk about them a little bit, and see what Nessus can do for us.